ಮಂದಹಾಸರುಚಿರಾನಂಬುಜ ಪೂಜಿ ಸುರನರು ತೇರ್ಮುದ ಧರ್ಮನಂದನಮಹಂ ವಿಚಿಂತ ಶ್ರೀಹರಿಕೃಷ್ಣ ಮಹಾರಾಜನೀ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಘನಶ್ಯಾಮ ಮಹಾರಾಜನೀ ಜಯ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಪರ್ಸನಾಲಿಟಿ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ್ ಅವರ ಪೂಜ್ಯ ಗುರುಜಿ ಪೂಜ್ಯ ಭಗತ್ ಜಿ ಆಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಡಿಟೀಸ್ ಜೈ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ್ ಟುಡೇ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ವಚನಾಮೃತ ವಚನಾಮೃತ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ಫೋರ್ತ್ ವಚನಾಮೃತ ಕ್ರೀಡ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಇನ್ ದಟ್ ವಚನಾಮೃತ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಶ್ರೀಜಿ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಆಸ್ಕ್ ದ ಕ್ವೆಶನ್ ಟು ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಮೂನ್ ಈಸ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ದ ಸೈನ್ಸ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ ಹರೇ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ ಹರೇ ಶ್ರೀಜಿ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಆಸ್ಕ್ ದ ಮೂನ್ ಈಸ್ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಟ್ವೆಲ್ತ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಇಲೆವೆಂತ್ ಕ್ಯಾಂಟೋ ಆಫ್ ದ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಾಗವತ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಸೈ ಟು ದ ಐ ಆಮ್ ನಾಟ್ ಆ್ಯಸ್ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ಬೈ ಅಷ್ಟಾಂಗ್ ಯೋಗ ಸಾಂಖ್ಯ ರಿನೌನ್ಸಿಯೇಷನ್ ಅಬ್ಸವನ್ಸಿಸ್ ಯಗ್ನಾಸ್ ಆಸ್ಟರಿಟೀಸ್ ಡಾನೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಪಿಲ್ಗ್ರಿಮೇಜಸ್ ಎಟ್ಸೆಟ್ರಾ ಎಸ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ಡ್ ಬೈ ಸತ್ಸ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಗಾಡ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಸೈಡ್ this implies that of all spiritual endeavors satsang is the greatest but what are the characteristics of one who regards satsang as the greatest spiritual endeavor so first of all bhagwan has described here the meaning of the words which is written in the 11th canto of 12th uh, 12th chapter of 11th canto of Srimad Bhagavat and in that verse Bhagwan has said I am not as pleased as I am pleased by satsang <clears throat> so first of all as a spiritual aspirant everybody whether a duty is renunciant or householder whether a duty male or female but everybody desire to please bhagwan this is basic and very common attitude of every duty but everybody's understanding is different suppose of one devotee mr a is desire to please bhagwan with austerities on other side another devotee mr b is also desire to please god but his method is different from mr a he desire to please god with donations another devotee he also want to please bhagwan but still he has also different understanding and so he perform pilgrimages to please bhagwan in this way we all all devotees or spiritual aspirant we all want to please bhagwan but our understanding is totally different that's why bhagwan has said here i am not as pleased by astang yoga because by astang yoga by sankhya by renunciation by observances by yagnas by austerities donations pilgrimages etc these are the means these are the way to please bhagwan according to our own understanding but not of bhagwan bhagwan's describe way to please him is totally different that is not attained by this all endeavors because bhagwan has say i am pleased by satsang 
so among all the spiritual endeavors to do satsang is the greatest according to bhagwan's understanding not our own but the question is that now we have understood that the satsang is the greatest endeavor to please bhagwan amongst all other endeavors but bhagwan asked the question what are the characteristic of one who regards satsang as the greatest spiritual endeavor now as we have we are informed that satsang is the greatest endeavor to please bhagwan and our goal in our spiritual life to please bhagwan so that we can enjoy his eternal bliss right now after knowing the exit way our duty is to walk on the way when we are that is totally another thing but we have a path we are on the path our destination is exit before our eyes at the form of bhagwan but still something is lacking in our spiritual endeavor so that we cannot easily or we cannot perfectly walk or run on the path of bhagwan so what are our mistakes what are our lackings what are our deficiencies by which we cannot walk on the path of bhagwan bhagwan has not asked this question but bhagwan had bhagwan has asked the question that what are the characteristics of person who perfectly walk on the path which is shown us by bhagwan himself let we see what are the characteristics Sri Ji Maharaj replied one who regards satsang as the greatest spiritual endeavor is profoundly attached only to the son of god this is what there are so many different definitions of the word satsang according to the scriptures there are so many definitions but widely accepted definition is that satsang means one have a good company good company means satsang this is what widely accepted definition of satsang but when we ask the vachanamrut when we ask the heart of bhagwan swami narayan bhagwan swami narayan is also accept this definition that to have a good company that is satsang but when we go deep something is different in meaning because bhagwan said when a devotee a spiritual aspirant formally attached to the son of god that is the satsang that is the precise form of satsang bhagwan has not said here that if one attach to the shastras because shastras are also the form of bhagwan that is also the good things if one read the scriptures every day that is also one have good company but still according to sri ji maharaj opinion that is not called perfect satsang when one attach totally to the sant of bhagwan then a person can walk precisely and perfectly on the path of bhagwan so this is the real definition of satsang i think according to the bhagwan's opinion and bhagwan has given here example how one attach because we have attached so many with so, so many things but still either in one circumstances or in another situation we cannot remain we cannot keep our 
attachment with the worldly things but here what is exact the attachment to the son of god bhagwan to understand us for the word attachment bhagwan given here or bhagwan has given example of a king forget the king but in our real life as we have many a time seen with our own eyes that if we have we all have seen a new baby right and also the infant's parents when a kids in very i mean very small baby if he cry or laugh if he walk with four hands means two legs and two hands whether he is not obeying the commands of his father or pa- father or mother but still his parents never even anger for their infants why because they have perfect and profound attachment to their baby in the same way just introspect your own life just observe our own behavior towards our own body we have so many deficiency in our body we have so many bad things but st- in our body but still we have never 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 feel any bad things for our body why because we have belief that we are this body this hand is mine right these eyes are mine this is what our totally false belief but it is too much firm so that we cannot easily change our feeling towards our body in the same way this is our attachment to our body as according to the scriptures and as the truth we are totally different from this body we are the soul we are the atma but as we have attached to this body we firmly believe that this is mind body similarly if we attach to the son of god if we attach our own atma to the son then we also firmly believe that the saints are mind just think when we have hunger in our stomach or if we thirsty how we eager to quench our thirst by drinking a water or giving it some food to quench our thir- uh, hunger similarly when if we have profoundly attached to the sun at the time when sun has no food to eat just just imagine what situation if you have not eat anything for last two days how is your feeling the same feeling we can feel when the sun has no food to eat in the same way in every situation in every condition in every aspect if we profoundly attached to the sun we can feel his sorrow we can feel his enjoying we can feel his eternal happiness this is what the satsang and if in this way we attach our own self to the sun then one day we can also enjoy the real bliss of bhagwan the real happiness of bhagwan's divine form which the sun every day experience 
we can also feel the same thing but for that we have attached in the same way as we are attached to our body then after explaining this example bhagwan says only one who develops such profound attachment for the bhakt of god has realized satsang to be the most redemptive of all spiritual endeavor so this is what the exact characteristics of a person who can walk on the path of god which is given us god himself as a gift this fact has been described in the shrimad bhagavat here the words of shrimad bhagavat is described yasyatma buddhi kuna petri dhatu ke sadhi kalatradi shu bauma ijjati hi yat tirth buddhi salile na karhi chit janeshva bigeshu sa eva gokhara bhagwan says he who regards the body our own body composed of the three constituents means vat pit and kapha to be his own self just as we regards a householder is regard his wife his children his possessions all these things is on even the duty a common spiritual minded person has feeling towards a pilgrimage place and sanctified water as a pure place and pure water similarly if one has no such great feeling for a duty of god then that person is as good as a donkey this is the words of bhagwan in sort anyhow bhagwan wishes for us to attach our own self to the sant of god because without attachment with the sant how can we recognize our own flaws our own faults and if we cannot understand our own mistake our own faults how can we cover or how can we remove our own mistakes and without removing our own faults how can we please our dear most bhagwan because our ultimate goal is to please bhagwan because we have no need to attain bhagwan bhagwan already himself attain us we have no need to do any endeavor to attain the form of god our only duty is to please the god and to please god we have to attach our own self to the sant now as the question arises in our mind if we attach only once to the sant and not forever so what happen you just think take an example if we want to make a cookie we have to take a small round ball of flour in constant tem- temperature for certain time if we have mixed all the ingredients flour milk butter whatever needed and just keep in the vessel the mix mixture of all the ingredients but that is not cookie even after hour or two days or week but when we put the same thing in the oven means in under certain temperature for perfect time period then we can have a cookie similarly if we have all the good qualities in our life but if we have no good company then how can we get the real fruit of the bliss of bhagwan 
and that is why gunadidanan swami says in his talk whether one even see the form of bhagwan in the heart while meditating but still without one's form attachment to the sant that is not good and so gunadidanan swami says only to attachment with the sant is the greatest spiritual endeavor and that is the satsang so in this way bhagwan swami narayan has described the glory of attachment in the vachanamrut of garuda second chapter 54 we have to discuss first thing various spiritual endeavors according to the common spiritual aspirant then according to bhagwan's opinion what is the greatest spiritual endeavor and what is the real spiritual endeavor that is satsang we have also described then the characteristic of a person who is perfect satsangi means who is walking on the path of bhagwan we have discussed and in the last in conclusion now it's time to resolve in our mind gradually if we want to develop our own self in the spiritual world in the path in the journey to unto the feet of bhagwan swami narayan as a satsangi of swami narayan fellowship if we want to progress day by day we have to increase our attachment to the sant to the bhakt and then after we have automatically our attachment with the form of bhagwan swami narayan so let we pray today to the bhagwan as well as our spiritual master our pujya guru ji and santos and all the devotees so that we can also one day attach fully as we are attach our own body similarly one day we will attach firmly to the sant of bhagwan swami narayan and this is what the real definition of satsang and one who in this way attach to the form of sant of bhagwan swami narayan is the pure is the real satsangi accept this satsangi every other any other person or any other devotees of bhagwan swami narayan is merely a so called satsangi but not a perfect satsangi so let we go to become a perfect satsangi hari krishna maharaj ni je श्रीपति श्रीधर सर्वेश्वर भक्तिधर्मात्मज वासुदेव माधव केशव कामद कारण स्वामीनारायण नीलकंठम भज हरिकृष्ण महाराज
प्रभुतव मुरते विनोदकारी पलपन विसरे नहीं जो विसारी जुगल चरण सोल चिन्ह जेह नजर समीपे रहो अमारिये हरि कृष्ण महाराज निज गणेशाम महाराज निज स्वामी नारायण भगवान निज सुप्रीम ओमायरी आर मोस्ट डियर भगवान स्वामी नारायण पैथ मेकर टू आर लिबरेशन पूज्यपाद गुरुजी एंड ऑल ऑफ यू डिवोटीज माय हम्बल जय स्वामी नारायण There are countless religions around the world. And each and every religion has a philosophy, has their own scripture, has their own various name or title, and has their own symbol. Now, just think Before we get into our topic, I wanted to give you an example so you can understand what I'm going to talk about. Just like how in the United States there's various different states, each and every state has its own different, you can say license plate. And on the license plate you can see that there's a title underneath it for example new jersey when you look at the title plate above it says new jersey then it says the title number of the of the plate and then it says the garden state if you go to florida you can see florida then the license plate number and then you see the orange state If you go to West Virginia, you see West Virginia, the license plate and then wild and wonderful. Just like how each and every state has its own slogan, has its own name, you can say a nickname. Just like that, each and every religion in the world has some kind of symbol that represents it. When we look at that symbol, we can right away think that oh the cross it's christianity or if you look at the star of david it's judaism or if you look at the yin yang it's taoist these are the various different kind of religions that when we look at their symbol we can right away identify well if we look at hinduism if we hear hinduism right away the symbol of om comes to mind and it it's actually om is the actual representation of the religion of hinduism but inside of hinduism there's many many sects and out of them one of our sect is bhagwan swami narayan sect which is called swami narayan now particularly looking into that religion we think we think of one thing when we see or hear swami narayan the tilak channel comes to mind right away because it's its symbol not only the tilak channel but also the necklace the two stranded beaded necklace which is called a ganti now the tilak channel represents our religion as a symbol and the ganti plays a role of you can say protection or refuge in gujarati it's called sharnagati and each and every devotee of bhagwan swami narayan wears this ganti in particular now in the verse shikshapatri verse number 41 bhagwan states that my disciples who have been initiated by their guru shall always wear around their neck a ganti prepared from wood or tulsi they should also wear a u shaped tilak on their forehead chest and both arms 
Now, Bhagwan in this Shikshapatri verse is pretty much stating that you should represent this religion by doing the Tilak Chamlo in the four locations, as Bhagwan mentioned, and wearing a ganti. Now, the reason why I'm talking about this symbol is because I get many, many questions from many, many kids that why do we wear this ganti? Well, the ganti is something that's very sacred to this religion. Nevertheless, it's a sign of refuge. When you look at this two-stranded necklace, just think of it as a sign of refuge. Now, a person takes refuge underneath something for protection, right? Just like if you go outside and it's raining, you use an umbrella so you don't get wet and the umbrella is playing or is your refuge to not getting wet. Just like how we wear clothes and we are protected from cold weather or adverse weather like snow, that's our refuge. Just like how we have or we live in a home, well, the outside disastrous weather, whether it rains really hard or if there's a tornado or if there's a hurricane or if it's snowing, the shelter that we are in is a type of protection. In the same way, the ganti or the two-stranded necklace that Bhagwan is describing here in this verse is a form of protection for us. Now, first and foremost, the two strands, what does it re represent? Well, one strand represents ourself, which is not the body, but the Atma. And the second strand represents Bhagwan himself. The two strands are together, so it's a sign of unity that you yourself are always joined or connected with Bhagwan. So, by wearing this, you're reminded of this. That's the first symbol of representation of this ganti that we're talking about. Now, <clears throat> you're probably thinking, where did this come about? This ganti, where, how did it, what is the story behind it? Just like how there's a story behind Arti. Muktanand Swami wrote the Arti and composed it for the first time in the village of Galvani in front of Bhagwan. What is the story behind the Ganti? Well, I'm going to tell you today. The Ganti <clears throat> was first composed by a devotee, or first made by a devotee, by the name of Kima Sutar. Now, Sri Maharaj was in the Durba of Dada Kachur, residing with his saints and devotees at that time. Now, Kima came and bowed down to Bhagwan. And <clears throat> in that time, <clears throat> whenever, whoever, whatever devotee came, never came empty-handed. Always brought some kind of food for Bhagwan or some kind of ornaments or some kind of clothing or anything just to gift Bhagwan, just to give to Bhagwan so Bhagwan becomes pleased on the devotee. It was kind of a tradition. At that time, Kima came with a necklace made from coconut shell. And it was double-stranded. And what he did was he unveiled it and gave it to Bhagwan. Now, Bhagwan saw this and he wore it immediately. And he became very pleased by it. He expressed his appreciation and offered a shawl to Kima. But then Bhagwan saw that this necklace should be something more, not only for myself, but for my saints and my devotees. So, many, many prominent saints like Sadguru Muktanan Swami, Sadguru Gopanan Swami, Sadguru Brahmanan Swami were sitting in the assembly there. Well, Sri Maharaj said and first asked, What do you think if we declare this kanti or this necklace as one of our symbols 
in our religion, a sign of refuge. One strand will represent my devotee, and one strand will represent myself. And whoever wears this shall be protected always by myself from any kind of evil spirits or any kind of any trouble, you can say. All the saints and devotees agreed, obviously, because it was something that was needed at that time. So from then on, Bhagwan accepted this as necklace and called it a ganti, and he made a rule that it should be made from sandalwood or regular wood, tulsi wood, which is sacred, and it should be worn around each and every devotee and saint, anyone who is a member of this sect. So that's the history behind the ganti. You're probably wondering, what does ganti mean? Well, gant, gant means neck. And something that is adorned around the neck is called a ganti. So that's how the name was brought up at that time. Now, a second thing is, okay, I understand that this is what it does and this is what it is. But what are the benefits? Obviously, there has to be something in it for us in order to invest. Just like how a businessman or an entrepreneur, he would invest his money in something that he thinks is worthwhile, that he thinks will give him some kind of profit, will give him some kind of positive vibe. In the same way, you're probably thinking, if I were this gunty, what is in it for me? Well, let me tell you, first and foremost, it's a type of shield or an armor. Just like how in the army or even right now, regular policemen that patrol our local streets, they wear bulletproof vest. You may not see it from the outside. You may only see a shirt, but inside he's wearing a bulletproof vest. It's their law. They always wear it when they're on duty. Just like how the bulletproof vest protects the policeman from bullets or any other kind of harmful objects, you can say. It's a kind of shield. Just like how a shield protects a knight so he cannot be harmed. In the same way, the gunti is a form of protection, a shield for all our devotees, all the devotees. A shield from what? You're probably thinking, well, just like how there is good, there is evil. Evil spirits, they do exist. Evil people, they are amongst us. To get protection from them, Bhagwan requires us to wear this ganti. He is kind of forcefully giving it to us, forcefully trying to keep us safe. Even if we don't want to wear it, he puts it in his own code of commandments, his manual of living, the Shikshapatri. So he's enforcing it onto us just for our own benefit and our good that please wear this kanti so I can protect you from any kind of spirits. Well, that doesn't mean that if we don't wear it, that Bhagwan is not going to protect us. If one has refuge underneath Bhagwan, he will protect you. But it is one of Bhagwan Sriji Maharaj's commands. That's why we should have no argument and do as he says. So the first thing is protection. The second thing is a, it's a signature of refuge. Now, not so much per particularly in the United States, but if you go to India, especially Gujarat, and if one is wearing a ganti, right away, a non-follower or a follower of different religion would see the ganti and immediately think, and see the tilak chanlo, and immediately know that this is a devotee of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. He's not going to eat meat. He do, he's not going to drink alcohol. He doesn't eat onion or garlic. He doesn't steal. 
all these rules, everyone knows that a devotee of Bhagwan Swaminarayan would never do. So, whenever a person looks at you, he thinks that this is a devotee of Bhagwan Swaminarayan. He has the refuge of Bhagwan Swaminarayan. So, we won't be able to influence him into doing anything our way or into doing anything unpious. So, it plays a form of a signature that we are refugees of Bhagwan Swaminarayan. And lastly, the benefit is it pleases Bhagwan Swaminarayan. By wearing the kanti, Bhagwan is pleased. Obviously, the end goal of everything, the end goal of doing Tilak Chandlu, the end goal of wearing kanti, the end goal of following the commands of God, the end goal of reading scriptures and coming to mandir and doing seva, the end goal of engaging with santos is to please Bhagwan Swaminarayan. That's our goal. That's our destination. That's our ultimate, you can say, final, final end point. But this is just one mini step that needs to be taken to please him. So why not? It's not going to bother you. Obviously, right now in fashion, many, many people wear many, many different kind of necklaces, not only now made from gold but or metal, but wooden ones, just carvings, various types, to, you can say, represent themselves or to look good in society. Well, why not look good for Bhagwan himself by wearing this kanti. I'm not speaking to all of those who are wearing a kanti. I'm speaking for those who aren't, but are kind of on trying to decide whether to wear it or not to wear it, or, you know, trying to make a decision that what is it? Is it something that I should be doing? I'm talking to those kind of devotees who are watching. So these are the three benefits. But before we talk about the benefits, obviously, there has to be some kind of process taken to wear this kanti, right? Well, Bhagwan says that it should be worn by a guru, meaning a spiritual master. And there's a certain process. It's called vratman, vratman dharavan. And what happens is that guru, he pours water into the devotee's hand or the person's hand, and has has him recite a couple of mantras, and then has that water poured on the ground. So after that water is poured on the ground, all that person's sins that that person has done is all washed away by the strength of that guru. And after that, the guru puts on the kanti of the devotee and tells the devotee to take a couple of vows. Now, the vows are probably very simple. You've heard of them. They're called the Panchavaratman. And it's not to consume alcohol, not to eat meat, not to steal, not to commit adultery, and not to accept food or water served by a person not approved by age old convention or rules by strictly following when wearing a kanti. These are all rules that these are the five ratmans a devotee should follow. Now these are given by the guru. And after that, also not eating onion, garlic, these are also rules. But these are the five main rules that after accepting kanti from a guru, one should always follow. So this is the process. But Back to our main, you can say, topic, the benefits of wearing a kanti. Well, number one, I told you, it protects you. It's kind of like a shield. So you're probably thinking, okay, I can't see this shield. Where is it? What does it look like? And how is it going to protect me? What, you know, I need some kind of proof for my eyes or some kind of at least a small story to go with it. So then you can believe my words. You're probably thinking in your mind. So I have researched a little bit and got a story for you in the time of Bhagwan Swaminarayan. And once upon a time, there was a devotee by the name of Vagji Bhagat. 
He was from the village of Kokra in the, villa, in the city of Buj in Gujarat. And one day he was coming, from, uh, coming back from the temple after having darshan of Bhagwan. And in his bullock cart, he was going back home. And along his journey back, he saw a person lying right in front of the road. So immediately he stopped his bullock cart and got off, worried and anxious, and went immediately to the person. He asked, why are you lying here? What's wrong? The person barely could speak. So he first introduced that my name is Hajo Ahir, and I'm very ill right now. I have a fever, and I'm unable to move. That's why I'm lying here, so that someone can help me. Well, Vagji was a devotee of Bhagwan, so whenever he saw anyone in distress, right away, he had a compassionate heart, and he had an intention to right away help that devotee out, or that person out. Well, this was not a devotee of Bhagwan, but he was just a person that he saw, so he decided to help him out. So what he did was he slowly carried Hajo and put him onto his bullock cart and decided to take him to his village and take him back to his home. So as he was going f to his village, now Hajo's health was extremely critical and he was on the verge of death because of his fever and he had not received any kind of medical attention and at that time obviously what was there he was on the road so from afar Hajo saw Yamduts Yamduts are pretty much demons that escort sinners back to Yampuri or hell Hajo was a sinner all his life he had committed sins non-stop bad sins and he had done everything that was pretty much against Bhagwan Swaminarayan so those Yamduts were standing there and Hajo saw that well Hajo was hearing what the demons were saying they were talking to each other the demons were saying that we want to take him but he is in the bullock cart of Vagji Bhagat, who is a devotee of Bhagwan Swami Narin. So we cannot take him. But as soon as he gets off the cart, we're going to pick him up and we're going to take him right away to hell because of his sins. Now, Hajo heard this and he became worried and anxious. So he looked towards Vagji and called him and told him that this is my story and those young dudes are standing there, ready to take me, ready to escort me to hell, forcefully, without my will. Please help me. So, Vagji had a kanti around his neck, but he had an extra kanti. What he did was, he placed it around Hajo. Hajo wasn't a devotee, but just by the compassionate nature of Vagji, he took the gunti and placed it around his neck. Now, he was completely and fully protected. Even if he was to get off the cart, those young dudes would not be able to touch him because he was underneath, he was wearing a bulletproof vest. He was underneath the refuge of Bhagwan Swaminarayan. So, when Hajo's village came, he got dropped off by Vagji. And he was then attended to. But those young dudes were still standing there, anxious. But they could not touch him because he was wearing gunti. So then he was cared for. And at home, Hajo's father, while he was being medically treated, he saw a gunti around Hajo. Hajo's father was complete disbeliever of Bhagwan Swami Narayan complete hater against Bhagavan Swamirana at that time. So he asked Hajo, what is this you're wearing? Hajo explained that this is protecting me from those Yamduts who are standing there, ready to take me to hell. So that's why I'm wearing this. 
a devotee of Bhagwan Swaminarayan by the name of Vagji came and put it on me, helped me and dropped me off here. That's why I'm still living here. His father, in dismay, said, You're not a devotee of Bhagwan Swaminarayan, neither am I, and I'm not having you as a devotee. So his father immediately took his hand and broke the kanti. And right there and then, those Yamduts who were standing there came and immediately took the Hajo's soul and took him to Yampuri. Why? Because his kanti broke. The moral of this story is that the kanti is actually plays a role of protection. Hajo did not worship Bhagwan at all. In his life, not even once. You can say he, he was an atheist. He did not even say Bhagwan's name once. But a devotee of Bhagwan Swaminarayan put a kanti around Hajo. And by the kanti, by the strength of that kanti, Yamdu, the people of the demons of hell, could not come and take him to hell because he was wearing a kanti. That was the shield. So, saying... The story is that even if that devo Hajo was taken to hell, but when he was present on earth, because of his protection, because of this kanti, he was protected in the same way. By wearing this kanti, we can also be protected. It, it's not about if we can see the protection or not. Many, many people right nowadays think that only if I can see it, only if I can see this protection or witness it, then I will wear it. But more than that, religion, remember, is blind faith. Accepting it, accepting Bhagwan's words blindly, and understanding these kind of incidents that did happen 200 years ago will definitely protect you in your life in the future if you accept a ganti at this time when it's offered. So, this was the sign of protection. Now obviously I've told you the story of Dayo and his refuge that he had taken underneath Bhagwan Swaminarayan. And his father, he was a disbeliever and what he did was he told, his father told his servant, I'm just telling you in short, just to give you a short preview, that his father told his servant to take Dayo to the farm and pretty much tie him up uh, and dip him in and outside of the well until he breaks his kanti. Dayo didn't do that and Bhagwan came and rescued him. Every time he was tested, just like Pralad was tested, Dayo was tested into adverse circumstances by his father because his father did not believe in Bhagwan Swaminarayan. And Dayo believed in Bhagwan Swaminarayan and took refuge underneath Bhagwan Swaminarayan. So in that way, adverse circumstances, he passed all of them because he was wearing the ganti and he had refuge that I am a devotee of Bhagwan Swaminarayan. So there are many incidents where the ganti has protected numerous devotees from these kind of evil spirits, even bad situations, and has also represented Bhagwan Swaminarayan. So in short, as devotees of Bhagwan Swaminarayan, last week lectures and two weeks ago, we talked about the four layers of satsang. The first layer is the crust in which physically one must follow. In the same way, physically, as a devotee of Bhagwan Swaminarayan, the first step is to do the Tilak Chandlo wear a kanti, go to mandir. All these physical actions and attributes should be developed because it's a representation of our religion and we should be proud that we are Bhagwan Swaminarayan's refugees. So the kanti is something that I highly suggest that if you don't have, you should wear immediately by a true ekantic saint or by santos who are near you 
who follow their code of conducts and are true saints. And you should take vows from them and from that day on follow the rules of Bhagwan Swaminarayan and all your life live a pure life. And through that, Bhagwan will protect you from any kind of adverse circumstances. So this is the glory of wearing a kanti. This, there's, this is the meaning of uh, kanti. And it's a representation that we are devotees of Bhagwan Swaminarayan. So I highly su suggest to all of you to take this refuge by first taking this physical approach and accepting a kanti around your neck. Hare Krishna Maharaj Nijay Sri Patim Sri Dalam Sarvadevi Swaram Bhakti Dharmatmajam Vasudevam Are Madhavam Kesavam Kamadam Karam Swami Narayanam Nilangantam Bhaje Hare Krishna Maharaj Nijay